Hello, everybody. I'm just letting everybody into the presentation. It's like I could see it. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys get started. And then if anyone else joins in, I'll let them in. So I'm going to turn it over to Kyle and Josh Chen. They are going to be presenting their capstone project for this year on animating Operation Torch using stop motion to tell history. Take it away. Uh, so I'm Kyle. And I'm Joshua. And we would like to thank you for coming to our capstone presentation. Our capstone project is a short stop motion animation film depicting the events of a World War II event known as Operation Torch. We are fascinated by the stories of World War II and have always enjoyed watching movies and reading novels depicting the events from the war. The strategy, camaraderie, and stories of the soldiers intrigue us. We decided to translate this interest into a final product. Since we have created stop motion animation before, we decided it would be a great way to portray the events of this particular battle. In our presentation, we will first go over the historical significance of Operation Torch and then go into the depths of animating and stop motion and our process of creating our film. Finally, we would like finally we would like to let you know that our film does is does depict war and will include sights and sounds such as explosions, gunshots, and killing. Operation Torch was an Allied offensive in North Africa planned by British and American officials to land more Allied troops in North Africa. The plan involved the invasion of three North African beaches, Oran, Algiers, and Casablanca. Each city was assigned a different task force, which would land on the beaches and then try to capture the cities. In the picture, you can see the three main beaches attacked by the three main task forces. The Allied forces were attacked by Vichy French soldiers, who at the time fought for the Axis powers. Remember, the Axis powers included Nazi Germany, Italy, and Japan. The French were conquered by Germany earlier in the war. The Germans then took control of the French government and forced the French to support the Axis powers. Operation Torch was initiated to relieve pressure for the Russians by, by forcing the Axis to fight on two fronts, both in the East and in North Africa. From the beaches, the Allies wanted to gain a strategic foothold to launch further attacks on the Axis in Europe. Operation Torch fell short of expectations. It did not take away Axis troops from the Eastern Front, and the French resistance that the Allies faced, faced did not fall as easily as anticipated. Many of the Allied soldiers were also inexperienced and poor communication led to more casualties than anticipated. In this picture here, you can see that the soldiers are walking in front of the tank rather than behind. Usually, soldiers would walk behind the tank in case of an ambush and would use the tank for cover. Despite these failings, Operation Torch was still largely considered a success. Operation Torch gave the Allies a foothold in North Africa to later invade Italy and eventually liberate the rest of Europe. The Allied troops that landed during the invasion surrounded the French soldiers and forced them to surrender. The French commander, Admiral Darlan, agreed to rejoin the Allied powers and fight the Germans. The results of Operation Torch would also later influence the famous landing on D-Day in Normandy. Occurring 18 months later, the D-Day landings were modeled after Operation Torch, but at a much larger scale. The failures of Operation Torch helped the Allied leaders improve their plan for D-Day. They improved their communication system, their ships, and their vehicles. The soldiers were also better trained and equipped for the invasion. And the picture on the top right is of D-Day, and the picture on the bottom is of Operation Torch. You can see that the picture of D-Day shows a much larger scale invasion than the one on the bottom. Now that you know about the history of Operation Torch, we are now going to explain to you about the process of stop motion animation. So what is stop motion? Some examples you may have heard of are Shaun the Sheep and Wallace and Gromit, which are both famous examples of full, full length stop motion films. 
stop motion provides a great way to make film because it's inexpensive and you can also make large small scaled sets. It also has a unique look and style. Stop motion, as explained earlier, stop motion animation is composed of many still shots known as frames. These frames can be played back at different rates depending on the circumstance. FPS, also called frames per second, indicates how many pictures are in one second of video. Slower frame rates, such as 15 frames per second, take a lot less time to create, but at the same time make your animation look less smooth. Higher frame rates, such as 60 frames per second, takes a lot more work and time, but results in a smoother animation. The GIF here demonstrates two frames per second rates. You can see, I'm not sure how good it is over zoom, but you can see that the 60 frames per second appears to be much smoother than the 24 frames per second ball. Walk cycles, as shown here, is one of the basics of, Le of the LEGO stop motion animation process. This picture shows how each frame, shows each frame of a minifig walk cycle. When played together, it'll appear as if the Lego minifigure is walking. Stop motion animation is very time consuming. It can take anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour for one second of film. It is also very difficult to position the objects in the exact way you want them without having them fall over. Imitating gravity and other basic movements is, a dif is difficult to make look realistic. The pacing of certain movements is hard to get right, and there are many techniques involved to make the characters move as realistically as possible. The picture here shows the pacing of a bouncing ball at 24 frames per second, which is what most stop motion films are taken at. The amount of movement between the frames changes depending on where the ball is. At the top, the ball moves less, and in the middle of the fall, the ball moves more. Um, this is a rough overview of our film process. So after we chose to animate Operation Torch, we started research and collecting materials. Uh, we then compiled our research, which we then translated into a script. We also made the models, models and sets necessary for the film. And then we used our script to film out our scenes. And then after we filmed everything, we added visual and sound effects to create the final product. We chose Operation Torch because it was a very important part of World War II, but is not very well known about. It also presented many challenges in animation that we had not tackled before, such as the ocean scenes and working with sand. We started research by finding a timeline of the events of Operation Torch, and then we found more details in uh, other sources in this book, An Army at Dawn by Rick Atkinson. Um, we started we added this information to our timeline, which we then created into, translated into a script. Um, if you look at this picture, we have the timeline on the left, uh, which has specific dates and then events. And then we translated that into the script, which shows exactly how we wanted to film it. Um, we wrote out the specific shots, including camera angles, setting, positioning, and the actions of the minifigures in the shot. To create our film, we needed to make LEGO models of vehicles and chips for the, used for the operation. First, we printed out 1 35th scale blueprints. 1 35th scale approximately matches the scale of LEGO minifigures. Using the blueprints, as well as photos of the vehicles, we could create the LEGO models. You can see here an example of a blueprint and image of the American M4 Sherman which we then converted into a Lego model, like this one. In total, we created, we made around nine different models for our film. We first made the M4 Sherman as seen in the previous picture, and then we made an M5 Stewart. We made the M3 Stewart, both of which, both the M5 and M3 are American light battle tanks. We made the Renault FT-17, which is a French light tank. We made the Renault R-35, which is another French infantry light tank, which was made in World War I. We made a French anti-tank gun, a large-scale USS Massachusetts, which is an allied battleship, 
and then another smaller scale USS Massachusetts. We also made LCVP, which is a landing craft used by the Allied soldiers to land on the beach. For our main set, we used a large piece of cardboard covered in clay. We then added kinetic sand on top to create the desert environment. For the ocean and water scenes, we used a large Lego base plate covered in these small blue pieces to resemble water. We then slid a ruler, you can see this one here, underneath the board to resemble the waves and the roll of the ocean. The sand was hard to work with because the Lego minifigures would not stick into it, which made it harder to pose them. Instead of having them stick, we had to make them balance. Although I'm not ideal, the sand setup added a much more realistic desert look. The ocean scenes were also a new challenge. We used clear blue pieces to depict the water and we created waves by sliding the ruler underneath the waterboard. We also moved the, clear blue, the small clear blue pieces when the waves crashed on the shore. The scenes with the battleship were also significantly scaled down so it was easier to film. Uh, we used different lenses for different types of shots. In this picture here, you can see we used a macro lens for the interior of the building. Um, we used a macro lens for close-ups, including another shot of the interior of a LCVP. Um, we used a wide-angle lens for most of the other shots when we needed a larger depth of field. Post-production. Once we complete the filming process, our footage then needs to have added visual effects, such as explosions and muzzle flashes. We find these downloadable assets online and use Adobe After Effects, which is a video editor, to add them onto our footage. Once complete, we then transfer the footage into Premiere Pro, another video editing software, where we splice together each individual scene and add sound. You can see this image is an example of what the sound design process looks like in Premiere Pro. Before we show you our film, we want to give you an overview of what the film depicts. For reference, the Allied soldiers move from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, and the French resistance soldiers move from the right of the screen to the left of the screen. Due to our limited time, our film only depicts the events that occurred near Oran, remember one of the three uh, landing points that the Allied forces landed on. We will also show the French surrender, which occurred at Casablanca. Our film begins with the USS Massachusetts, the Allied battleship. It bombards the North African coast where the French are before the Allied invasion begins. You will then see a group of American and British soldiers traveling on landing crafts to the beach in the early morning. The American soldiers have dark green helmets and dark tan uh, uniforms, and the British soldiers have tan helmets and tan uniforms. Once on the beach, the Allied soldiers immediately get attacked by the Vichy French soldiers. The French soldiers have dark tan uniforms and dark silver helmets. Eventually, the Allied soldiers push past the beachhead and enter the towns. In the towns, the Allies are met with more French resistance. The Allied tanks are dark gray, like these ones here, and the French tanks are primarily light gray. After continuous fighting, the Allies finally managed to s surround a hotel in Casablanca where the French commander, this guy, Admiral Darlan, is giving orders from. There, the Allied commanders meet with Admiral Darlan to negotiate terms for surrender. In total, we took roughly 8,000 pictures. Those aren't in the final film were cut either because they were test shots, incomplete shots, or not good enough to be kept. Our film, which we'll present today, is exactly 4,709 pictures, or individual frames. It took roughly 200 hours to combine to complete, including the building of the models, the sets, test shots, shoot and edit the sound, and visual effects and text. We hope you will enjoy our animation, and again, I want to remind you that the film is pretty loud and portrays events that may be disturbing to some viewers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Admiral, are you willing to surrender all of your forces in North Africa? Yes. Thank you. Um, finally, we would like to thank our mentor, Alex Mushi. I think unfortunately he couldn't come today because he had something, but he was a big help in guidance in cinematography. And then we would also like to thank Mr. Schneider and Mrs. McDonald for keeping us on track to finishing our presentation and giving us helpful feedback on how our presentation should look. incredible I, I'm just blown I'm blown away by it no pun intended I'm blown away um, really just really really impressive um, we'll open it up to a discussion we have quite a few people in here so if anyone would like to make comments or ask questions um, you can use the chat feature or you could use the raise hand function in zoom I'll start I just want to say to both of you how incredibly impressed I am um, for taking us through a very extensive process that required an immense amount of dedication on your end uh, to showing us an end product. And I know that when we take a look at these kind of films, we, we equate minutes, right? Like the short time into it being perhaps not that big, but when you go through the amount of stills that you had to put together to get to this point, Gentlemen, I am so incredibly impressed. So my question is not actually a technical question, but I am I am taken aback by how you really even to a T got the the architectural landscape right with your with your design in terms of what it was going to look like there being there in that moment in time. Um, this is clearly something that you both have a passion for. What will you continue to do with this talent that you have? Um, I think we've done two other projects sort of similar to this before, and I think we're going to continue um, doing similar things, looking at other battles and um, portraying them in a similar way. Um, we might add different other film or other sh types of shots, so like stuff with planes or uh, more miniatures. Um, and I think we'll probably just put it on YouTube and just see where it goes from there. Um, I don't think we have that many other plans apart from that. Well, I would love to learn under your guidance. Let me, let me tell you, um, this was just absolutely fabulous on so many accounts. And, and gentlemen, I'm impressed. Um, and I'm, I'm a committed viewer to what you have to put together. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, and I just want to echo um, some of Mr. Buno's comments and absolutely and as a counselor, I'm kind of like running through all of the different careers that that tailor to your project and what you did. I mean, in terms of the art behind it, the film, the cinematography, the engineering software that you used, social studies. I mean, talk about multidisciplinary. This is, you nailed it. So I, I can't imagine. I mean, when you said 200 hours, I'm sure it was even more than that because 8,000 pictures um, that you had to spend time and it's just, I mean, this, this could be a movie, <laughs> um, really it's, I'm just so impressed, so impressed, um, and just so professionally done too. Um, really, really well done. Anyone else questions, comments from the audience? Uh, yes. Um, Hel Helga. It'll be me, Chris. Um, Hey guys, uh, I have, one question. Well, actually, I have lots of questions, but I'm just going to ask you one today. Given your financial constraints and your time constraints, is there anything you wish you had done differently or you could have added to the film? Um, I think um, mainly, mainly we were a little bit rushed, so some of the scenes could have been a little bit more flawless. Um, also, the battle we mainly did an abridged version so only kept in key events that happened so as it was pretty short and some of the scenes were kind of quick so if we were to do it again with more time we would probably just 
focus mainly on um, covering more ground in the battle and probably trying to just make it even better. <laughs> Good answer. And I just want to read through um, some of the comments in the chat um, from an email area zero zero. Wow, guys, super awesome. Love the sound effects and visual landscape. A plus um, plus from Paul Arison. Amazing work and great presentation, Kyle and Joshua. This is from Paul, Jenny, Eli and Haley. Um, and then from Cam Dargi. I'm probably saying it wrong, sorry. So talented, thank you for sharing this amazing project. Yes. Um, so I'm Jeannie. Um, I actually have a question. How did you come up with the ways to think of using those pieces for the water? That was very, and, and then using the ruler, I think that was very ingenious. Um, so we used the buttons. We have done a couple other just mocks of like just, um, models basically using those buttons and then it was actually our dad's idea to do the waves um he suggested you know sliding a piece of paper or something underneath um and we tried it and it looked good so we decided to keep it and i think it turned out pretty well i just have a quick question how much would you say in terms of self-teaching did you have to do i know that you had a mentor that was very valuable and helpful but how much did you have to do in terms of your own exploration of learning how to do some of these things 90 percent um i think we a lot of it was self-learning um for me i so for for the workload we split it up josh did most of the animating like i did a little bit too and then i did most of the post-production work so for me at least in the post with all the softwares that was pretty much all self-learned from like looking online tutorials and stuff like that yeah i had a feeling that that was the case well i hope like mr buno said i hope you keep keep this up because you definitely have a knack and I, I know you have a YouTube channel um, dedicated to it. So we'll definitely be sure to follow. And since this is recorded, we'll, we'll spread the word as long as you're, you're okay with that. Um, and we'll definitely send you the recording as well. Any, um, any final comments from anyone, including Josh and Kyle, anything else? Uh, just thanks again, everyone, for coming and uh, showing your support. It's, it means a lot to us. Yeah, absolutely. On behalf of the Capstone Committee and um, Guilford High School, thank you all for joining tonight, um, or this afternoon, I should say. And um, I think we're going to close it up at this point. And everyone have a good afternoon and happy summer. And really well done, Josh and Kyle. Nice job. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody.